where at Husker Harvest Days outside of Grand Island, and you never know who you might run into, but uh, somebody that I'm sure uh, many folks want to hear from is uh, Alan Brugler, Brugler uh, uh, Marketing and Management. And uh, uh, I tell you, as, as we look at this year, it's going to go down as kind of uh, uh, two different tales. One, excellent yields, but no price. And so uh, I guess, what are you saying? That's probably the first thing I say. What, do, what are you saying, at least to get us through this short term? Well, you have to look at different c commodities, of course. We tried to do the right thing in wheat. We cut the acreage right. about $3 million on hard red, and then Mother Nature surprised us with the yield. We have way too much wheat, and not only in the U.S., but in the world. All the primary exporters have too much wheat. Uh, so the market's job is to clear that uh, through price uh, or through carry to give you uh, payment to store it. So that's what we're seeing right now is the market trying to build some carry in. Basis, of course, isn't any good. Uh, you do have LDP, and I, I'd encourage people to remember how you play the LDP yeah. game. You, you, you look for a, a big sell-off that knocks the LDP five-day average down, and then when the market starts to rebound, that's when you take your LDP, try and float it a little higher before you sell the cash. Uh, you know, corn and beans, a little different situation. Big crops, of course, but uh, we're still trying to figure out what that corn yield really is. I think it uh, is probably a little lower than USDA came out with this week. Well, that's what uh, a lot of folks are saying. You know, we, we, we played a lot into what the Pro Farmer Tour said, and it, it was a little different than, than what USDA. USDA has always kind of been a little bullish, but again, that's a little different, different scenario of what we look at. But again, early reports are uh, we're getting out there in the fields, and those yields aren't exactly uh, what they thought they might be. Yeah, it's, it's always tricky because expectations can be high. Uh, we're, we're definitely getting the feedback that they're disappointing. Right. But uh, I, I think the, the bottom line is farmer, farmer expectations were high, so the farmer yield survey part of USDA's equation is high uh, compared to usual. The objective yield plots are the ear counts are down. They're, this is a three-year low in ear counts even after the revisions this week. So uh, that limits your ability to grow that yield a little bit. The, the question is what's your, what's your grain weight? And uh, if we have a wet fall, yeah, that tends to add grain weight, but it also adds harvest loss issues uh, with mud and, and, and so forth. So uh, the jury's still out. But what we know is it's going to be a 2.2 to 2.4 billion bushel carryout, depending on final yield. And uh, the market could go as low as 280, 290 on the board. All right, we have to realize that. It seems like we're down a long ways after the rally we had in the spring. We could go lower for the, the harvest low or the yearly low. All right. If it's not in October, it might be next winter, like it was last year. But uh, you know, stay stay with your put options, stay with your your hedges. Uh, you know, try and ride it out. You you'll get an opportunity again. Those that were thinking there might be some opportunity with soybeans, uh, we're looking at a relatively or a record crop. Yeah, we're looking at absolutely a record crop, uh, over 4.2 billion bushels if USDA's uh, number sticks. Right. And by the way, historically they do tend to bump that up a little right, bit in October. Right. Uh, but I'm pretty optimistic on beans long term. And the reason is Brazil's cutting their first crop bean production. They're, they're, uh, they've ha had such high corn prices that they're, they're switching some of the acreage to, to uh, so, uh, corn for the first crop. Uh, so that's going to limit their exportability for the first six months. Argentina is already switching to more corn because of the tariff change down there. They went to 0% export tariff on corn, but it's still 30% for this year on beans. So uh, the bottom line is we don't have a lot of export competition. We should see phenomenal export program uh, October, November, December particularly. And uh, if there's any glitch in the weather down in Brazil and Argentina, then you, I think you'll get a run-up uh, of the type that we had last year where it, it, it goes up a buck, buck and a half really quickly. Well, there's other outside influences as well. We see the, the value of the dollar throwing some things uh, one way or the other. China, European Union, what's going on there? Uh, trying to find either one way to, to move this market to a positive, and, and it seems like all the news that's out there, really nothing is, is spurring things just to see any rally, at least in the short to midterm, right? Well, short term, yeah, the thing that would help you the most probably would be the dollar breaking. Uh, we're going back and forth on whether the Fed's going to raise rates or not raise rates. Our, our bias is they won't do it until December. You know, get a lame duck Congress, a lame duck president, that's a good time to raise rates if, if you're not sure otherwise. Uh, a weaker dollar would help us because it, it helps with our export leverage. But again, I think the, the, the fundamental picture is we need somebody to quit growing something. 
All right. If U.S. cuts back on winter wheat, that'll help. Uh, if it discourages the European Union or Russia from next spring from growing, that helps. Uh, the market's got to tell somebody to quit growing something. And the challenge is, of course, we're we like to grow corn, beans, and wheat, right. and uh, the market says we've got plenty of all of them right now. Well, there's been some discussion uh, uh, of possibly looking at the farm bill to, to tweak some things as far as to maybe bring things back, you know, words we didn't think we'd ever hear again, set aside or or uh, on uh, on farm storage, do something to, to trigger uh, some sort of a boost. But I don't know if those things are really going anywhere. And, and as we look before long, I mean, producers are already making decisions for next year and early surveys say, we're looking at reducing wheat acres, uh, as, we're, as we're saying right now with the planters rolling, uh, but also maybe more soybean acres. Uh, uh, boy, there's still a lot of unanswered questions as far as as we move forward looking into 17. Yeah, it's a very difficult planning environment, uh, not only financially but politically and what kinds of programs you might see out of Congress under the, the next uh, group of people. I, I think you uh, if, if we're going to continue to have this global surplus situation, then we need to look at those set-asides or, or increasing the number of CA or CRP acres again. Uh, again, we've had three good years in a row for world yields. That doesn't typically continue, but until somebody has a problem, uh, we've got a problem. It's, it's, it's basically like a, re a group of retailer stores uh, when they've, they've built too many stores in a, in a city, somebody has to go out of business. The difference in agriculture is Mother Nature can make everybody whole in about a month. Well, it's interesting. Well, Alan, uh, lots of things uh, that you're dealing with. The folks want to talk more with you. How can they do that? Well, we're based in Omaha. Uh, you can call us at 402-697-3623. We're on the web at www.bruglermarketing.com. And or you can send me an email, alanb at bruglermktg.com. All right, Alan. Well, thanks. Good to see you, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Alan Brugler, Brugler Marketing Management, has joined us from Husker Harvest Days. For AgView, I'm Ken Rogers.